did a, um, a demo prototype looking at how to design for screens and then whatever it is that you're doing for your business, for your app, uh, or if you have a physical product, like whatever track you're in, uh, ultimately having control over your own web destiny is gonna be important. It's like we talked about last night, as an entrepreneur, you have to decide what things you're gonna be doing uh, versus what things you're gonna have other people do. When you're first getting started, you don't have any money. So anything that you can do yourself, you wanna do. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it, it's certainly more beneficial to focus on the things that only you can do because there's lots of people can make websites. There's not lots of people that can do your app and can be the founder. So it's sort of always a push and pull. You'll find that to be the case no matter how successful you get is just trying to figure out the best way to spend your time. But one of them is making websites. And the interesting thing about websites is um, well, they come in a lot of varieties and flavors. So again, yesterday was screen design. So that's for both native apps like iOS and Android apps, but also web apps. And so it's one thing to design it uh, and to have a working clickable prototype, but it's another thing to actually build it. A lot of you guys, I'm sure, have familiarity already with WordPress, with Squarespace, lots of tools, Wix, Weebly, things like this. A lot of website builders, very sophisticated. 10 years ago, none of those existed. Uh, and you had to do all this by yourself, by hand, coded, custom, very challenging. Uh, but some of the tools now are so sophisticated that, that you can basically, uh, you can do what any designer 10 years ago could do, just um, in an afternoon kind of thing. So. Uh, and again, you, you may or may not need a website for your particular app or, or the, the thing that you're building, but to promote your app, to promote your business, of course, you're gonna need some sort of marketing website. And so to the extent that you can build it yourself, you won't be relying on someone else to do it. You don't need to ask a designer or bug them or they do something, you have to give feedback, then back and forth and this. So the extent to which you can be empowered to do this yourself, the better. Now, the reason that I work with Webflow, I love Webflow, I've been using it a long time, I used them all. I did web, web, websites in uh, WordPress for many years. Um, but there's a lot of limitations that you'll get with things like WordPress and Squarespace, and they're great. You could use them forever, and that's fine if you like them. Uh, WordPress is enormously difficult to develop in. Um, you're just sort of writing raw PHP, which is bananas, just to do like basic template work. Uh, and then Squarespace is great, um, but you're sort of limited by what the templates allow you to do and to edit, whereas Webflow, you can just build anything you want from scratch in an hour. It's just fantastic. So it's all free, click and drag. Um, it's very similar to a lot of the design software that you've seen. But the advantage too with Webflow is beyond using it, you could just use it indefinitely as your website forever. Or if you wanted to design something just using their tool, you can export the code and you can use it wherever you want. You can use it in WordPress, you can use it in anything. Like it just gives you HTML, CSS, and at that point you can just, you're off to the races. You can do whatever you want. So whether you wanna use it just as a tool or whether you actually wanna use it to be your website, either way it doesn't matter. We're gonna be focused more on the tool part of it uh, and we're gonna sort of uh, continue from yesterday. Some of you guys were here for that presentation. We made a little app called Glamper and that's about finding uh, the cool glamping sites around the city. It was just like a made up app or whatever. Uh, but we're now we're gonna say that now that we have this app that we designed uh, in Figma, now we're gonna look at the marketing website. We're just gonna do a simple landing page. But I'm gonna show you that in just like an hour um, you can use Webflow to make sort of anything that you can dream of. So that's the idea. So a lot of this will just be sort of hands-on stuff. I want to get you guys your hands dirty, sort of doing this and get comfortable sort of with the interface because ultimately the extent to which um, you don't need to rely on anybody, any designer, you can just do whatever you want is going to be a real advantage for your business, a real advantage for whatever that you're doing. So, so today a little bit about Webflow. I mentioned a second ago uh, sort of the, some characteristics of it, but we're gonna look a little bit at layout basics. Um, that's sort of the key thing about making a website is you just have to put boxes places. Uh, it's not unlike what we did yesterday with Figma, <laughs> mostly screen design, is just moving boxes and lining them up and putting text on images. That's like 99% of, <laughs> of your design. Um, but then when it comes to actual website, like web code, something that you can actually display, um, you're doing basically the same thing. Um, you're just moving boxes around. So we're gonna look at that together, pretty simple. Uh, and finally, uh, we'll do building a landing page. So you will learn a little CSS, just at least the terminology, because it's sort of inescapable uh, as far as that goes. But when you guys saw the name for the workshop today, did anybody look at Webflow in advance or already have experience with it? Did you guys look it up ahead of time? Anybody? You did? What did you find? Uh, it just looks a lot more customizable than the WordPress stuff that I've done before. Yeah. I can actually interact way more with the CSS and HTML, which is yeah, agreed, yeah, and that was my experience as well. Is, uh, and there's nothing, again, nothing wrong with WordPress, it's fine, you love it, use it, great. Um, but I, I find it, I hit the limitations so quickly that um, finding another tool is, is even better. Uh, anybody else take a look or play around with it at least a little bit? 
Nobody. Uh, it's a. It's. It comes out of. It's. A, it was a startup. It's comes out of Silicon Valley. It's uh, again. It's like what. What can you sort of do in a browser? It's amazing to me that like yesterday we saw Figma, which was basically like Photoshop in a browser. Well, this is essentially. I guess I call it Dreamweaver or something in a browser. But the idea that you can basically uh, just have this really sophisticated software that used to cost tens of thousands of dollars over the course of years or whatever you have this. Uh, but that's it, Webflow. It's a tool. It's both a host. Uh, I'll pull up a little page here. So it looks like this, webflow.com. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff that it does. I'm only going to sort of scratch the surface. You can take a look at webflow.com and just like look around. Um, but there's a uh, design tool is sort of where it started, and that's about actually laying things out. But then they added after that CMS functionality so that if you wanted to actually have a database with entries and data and a blog and photo gallery, whatever, you can do that. Uh, and then they also have like hosting as well. So we'll, we'll look a bit about that as well. Um, and then they actually just launched e-commerce too, which is really nice. Uh, Squarespace, one thing I love about Squarespace is how easy they make it to do um, like shopping cart stuff. You can get something off the ground really quick and do uh, take, take payments uh, real easy. And now you can do that with uh, Webflow as well. So this, this is a little bit more sort of DIY. Um, you wouldn't be here if you didn't want to get your hands dirty. Of course, this whole site you're looking at here, the actual Webflow site itself was designed in Webflow. So this is all stuff. They have really, really neat stuff as far as like, um, like you can see these, these elements on the page. They're all individual sort of objects. And as I scroll, um, but you can like take things, you can twist them, you can have them move at different rates. Um, there's really kind of cool, I mean, you can, you can spend months just sort of diving around in this, but see even how they have the text sort of move across. I'm just scrolling right now, which you guys will do the same when you see it. Um, but really cool, all stuff that you can just do using their little builder. Uh, and there's tons of cool stuff that you can see. So the business sites is new, commerce, scroll down here. It's so funny to think I'm actually scrolling to the bottom of the page, but it doesn't, doesn't look like it. And then there's more stuff here. But anyway, so yeah, so that's just a quick overview of this. The actual designer itself, I'm going to have you guys go to, oops. Um, we're going to a little bit about this. Um, uh, I showed you guys this yesterday too. I'll go ahead and show you this again. This was my little, um, you know, the importance of interviewing your customers because you need to know exactly whether what you're building, anybody has any desire in at all. It's, it sounds like it would be easy, right? Like number one rule of starting a business, make something people want and then spend less than you earn. And that's all you need to do to have a really successful business. Literally just those two things. Make something people want, spend less than you earn. It sounds really simple, but it's actually really hard to do. So you might think to yourself, well, what do we need to, um, to uh, What's going on here? Why can't I? It's not letting me play my little file. Oh, that's fun. Let me try to refresh this here. Um, you'd think it would be so simple just to, to do something that you, oh, what's going on? Okay, well imagine in this very funny video that all these children are sliding down the green uh, hill there instead of using the slide, even though someone went to a lot of trouble to make the slide, I can't get it to play for some reason. I don't know why that's not letting me play. Well, I'll, I'll worry about that later. I'll put it up for you guys so you can see it later, but for now. Um, just go ahead and pull up the sample site here. So this is the one that, that um, this is sort of the, it's Glamper. I'll pull it up here and you see what it looks like. It looks like this, as soon as it pulls up. And that's, that's, that's the address. And when you make a site on, on Webflow, um, and the totally free thing, then it's just whatever the name of your website is, .webflow.io. So pull that up and you'll see this is sort of the, the landing page that we're going to build using Webflow, and it's the marketing page for the app that we designed last night uh, on Figma. So you can sort of see the whole connection here across screen design versus building a website or whatever. So first things first, pull that up, just take a look around. There's, there's not much to it. Um, it's literally just a single page uh, with stuff laid out. But if you resize your browser, you'll see that it's responsive. That's a big part of what sort of every website we do these days is you have something you want to make sure it works on big screen, iPad, uh, mobile phone, that kind of thing. I didn't do a ton of testing on this, but. Go ahead. Why is this so serious? Sure does. No, that's, uh, well, it, it does, but you still have to do it. You'll see what I mean. So it's like, when you're looking at the designer view, you've got your like big screen laptop view, and there's a place where you go to iPad and you can see how it shifts. And you might have to make some tweaks as far as like text size and spacing. And you go down to mobile landscape and then mobile portrait. And then in each view, you'll maybe have to make some tweaks or changes. But in some cases, you can do it 
uh, and you go all the way down, and if you sort of do it well, you don't have to do much changes at all. But yeah, I mean, ultimately, it'll let you do that, and also you'll have to do some manual tweaks and adjustments, but yeah. Yeah, if you couldn't do that, it wouldn't be very helpful. So this is the weirdest thing. So my, my you can see my little arrow here, my cursor, it's hitting a, like a box. Like it won't, uh, won't go anywhere except here to here. That's so weird. Anyway, not that we need it. That's the first one. Um, so if you wanted to, you don't have to do this. This is what we were doing yesterday. This is our um, prototype link here. This is the one that we were looking at. It's uh, bit.ly. You have to type that because like, I don't know an easy way to send it to you, but it's uh, ca uh, two capital R, capital T, capital D, four capital B, lowercase z, if you wanted to look at that one. So that's, that's what we did yesterday, uh, or it's a, a demo that I showed yesterday and we were all spending some time building, building little clickable prototypes with Figma. Uh, and then so again, just to kind of draw all these things together. Uh, and then finally, um, the last link I'll give you here is if you haven't created a Webflow account, go ahead and do it. Um, if you use this link here, I think I get like a month free of hosting or something. So uh, full disclosure, this is an affiliate link. <laughs> so you can help me out and give me a free month of hosting if you sign up with this. If you already did it, it doesn't matter. I don't care. It's just fun. Extra, extra bonus for, for being with you guys tonight. So, so those three things. Uh, I'll put the other one back up in case that was too fast. Come back over here. So again, here is the Glamper, which you already have. The second one here is if you want, you don't have to do this, it's just if you want to. 2RTD4BZ, lowercase z, and then um, here's the Webflow one, 2UO, or is that a zero? Might be a zero. Uh, capital H-C-U-J. Um, you can also just go to webflow.com and create it. You don't have to, have to do it this way, but what's our next thing here? Yeah. So let's look at the Webflow Designer UI here. I'm going to come in and there we go. so uh, here's what it looks like. So you can see that the, the website itself, um, the one that, um, that it looks like this, uh, it looks just like the, um, what you see when it's actually like a real website or whatever. Uh, but this is what it looks like. So once you've logged in and uh, you guys can do the same thing too, when you create an account, uh, we'll have you also um, create a new website and then that way you can follow along. So if you've already created your Webflow account, then there's like a big green button that basically says like create your first website. You guys all see that? Do you want me to pull it up or can you see where that is to create a website? You got it, yeah. And then it'll ask you, do you want a blank or do you want to do a template? Just to pick, just pick blank. Because they do have templates, which is fun. So there's a lot of free stuff you can do. There's some paid stuff. Uh, but go ahead and just create a blank one. So just have yourself like a blank screen um, that essentially looks I'll do that process together too, so we see. So yeah, it's new project up here in the top right corner. It's actually a blue button. And then it says, what do you want? Choose a starting point. So you choose the, the blank one here and just whatever name is fine. Create project and that's it. So it's pretty simple. So just create a blank one and then that way you can follow along. And we'll just, I'm gonna do a little bit of introduction to the way that the UI works. And I'm just gonna show you sort of how easy it is to make this little sample website uh, together here, and then you guys will be able to make anything that you need to make for your app or idea. Oh, it is so slow. Well, I don't need it, so I'm just going to come back here. So let's look first at the at the UI here. So um, the main couple, the main things that I'm going to show you guys are um, anything on the on the page here. You can click, and it'll give you sort of like Figma uh, or like a lot of apps. Basically, there's they're pretty similar. Where on the one hand you have um, the details about the thing that you've clicked over here on the right hand side. I know this is like a lot of stuff and it can be a little overwhelming, but don't worry about it. We're gonna just go through the handful of things that are sort of most important for that. Uh, there's a ton of really great tutorials on uh, Webflow's website that uh, like video stuff. And so anything that you'd wanna know, there's like hundreds of videos, like official videos. So I'm just gonna go through the highlights here, but I'm just gonna give you some familiarity of it so that you're not, you're not sort of uh, overwhelmed or, or have some some fear about it, but um, so yeah, so here's still loading, still, okay, so yours should look like this, like a white, blank white canvas. Uh, and then before I go back to that one, so you can see here at the very top, you have the opportunity here, there's like a little laptop icon, you guys see that, and then a little iPad, and then like a phone turned sideways, and then a phone that's regular. So then this is where we are on the desktop, and then the tablet, the um, iPad version here, sort of gives you the width of um, a standard iPad, and it's within a range, um, you know, from here to here, it, if you, as, you, as I drag it, on the bottom, do you see if I get to a point right there and then it'll tell you, um, you guys see in the bottom right, that's like the iPad mini and then the different sizes or whatever. So 
Um, but again, you don't have to be real exact. If you're just within the ballpark, um, you'll, be, you'll be fine. So that one's right there. And then if I go to the landscape here, same deal. As I move it, you'll see there's like BlackBerry Playbook, which I don't think is still a thing. <laughs> this is the Galaxy Tab, Kindle Fire, stuff like that. Again, your, your app might be on a lot of different devices. And then this last one here in the top, uh, Mobile Portrait, that's again like your narrowest right there. Same deal. And as you move it, you can see that this is, um, uh, it gives you a sense of like where these breakpoints are. So here's like LG, Nexus, iPhone 6, as I sort of click and drag, and so that way you can target individual things. But again, it doesn't have to be super exact. Mainly we're just gonna, um, but we're gonna start here with the body. Uh, and then you guys will have a blank page, and I'll just show you. So once you have something on the page, it looks something like this. And um, first things first, and I went ahead and did this in my slides, but I don't know how, well we, how much we need this. So yeah, we're just gonna look at it together. I don't have to really go through these slides. Uh, we will come back to this in a second though. So, so let's familiarize ourselves here. So what I got, want you guys to do is, uh, at the basic level, a website just looks like this. This is our, our white screen here, and we've got, uh, or I should say like your screen will look, will look like this. But here you can see that essentially the way the nomenclature that Webflow uses, and this is really handy, it's sort of the same in any website you're designing. Basically you have a section of the site that is full width, and so it'll extend edge to edge to your viewport. Uh, and then you'll have another, and that's where the section here is this guy. And then you'll have another one where you actually want a fixed width boundary. And we can look at a lot of websites, like um, think of it like a good example. So um, let's try just like a design um, firm that I know if this is going to load. Yeah. So let's see here if this is a good example. I thought it was, or no, nope, terrible example. That's okay, I'll bring one up later. But um, the idea here is that you've got something full width and that is for when you would need things that extend all the way edge to edge to your, your, your viewport, but your text in general will be narrower. So you can look on this example here where I've got things that span like this background. So you can see that both the color and the little, the little images here, that ex extends full. But once you get to here, you'll see I've got a container where this is the actual width um, and it's sort of a line, invisible line that runs from the left side of the logo all the way down here. And then from the right side of this link all the way down here. And that's sort of the width of my page. So you can see I've got something here that makes this white all the way edge to edge. But at the same time, I want to have like a fixed width boundary. Does that sort of make sense what I'm talking about? So I've got this white here that's like a full section. But then as I click here, there's a container. And it might be a little small to see. I think you can see that. So that's sort of the basic building block is you have your section, which is full width, and you have your container, which is fixed width. Uh, and from there, you have little boxes within there, and you can make those whatever you want. And those are called divisions. Uh, they're abbreviated as div. Uh, and so div blocks are sort of the fundamental building block of your page. And sort of like how in Figma yesterday, we were just drawing rectangles and moving them around. Uh, it's basically the same thing. You're just drawing rectangles and moving them around. Uh, it is a bit trickier, though. But so this is our foundation. This is what we're going to try together here is to make some sections and some containers. So first things first, I want you to come over here to your blank page. And there's a little plus button in the top left corner, add elements. You can also just hit your A key and it'll open this little window. And you can see here, like I said, there's section, container, grid, columns. I'm not gonna go through all of the things in here. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can just drag onto the page. But just to get started, I want you to grab the section here that's the first one in layout and just drag it to the page. And then you can sort of see here that there's a blue box. It goes, it spans from edge to edge. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a couple of them just for the sake of um, you know, having some different sections down the page. You can also just click this and you can do Command C, Command V, and you can um, you know, do like more of them down the page that way. So it responds to like Control C, Control V, Control Z, that kind of stuff. So I just made four sections here and those span the full width edge to edge. Uh, the next thing I want you to do is in that same, uh, add element button there, click on that one, and then do the container, which is the next one over, and drag the container just into one of your sections, doesn't matter which one. And you'll see that now it gives you sort of a fixed width boundary there within your larger one. And I'll show you sort of how that looks in a second. So I want you to do that for a couple of them. So go ahead and take your container and then move it inside of a different section. I'm just gonna do this for all the ones I have here. So we'll just do four, just for demo purposes. So now you have four sections and four containers. Now, if you wanted to, I'm going to click on this very first section, and then uh, whatever you do here is reflected, or rather, whatever you do in the side panel here, 
will be reflected here. And there's a lot of options that we have. I'm going to start off just making things really simple. So for now, if you scroll down, do you guys see down here, if you go where it says backgrounds, can you guys see this? I'm going to collapse some of this just so it's not so like um, size. Make this a little easier to see. Position, effects. <laughs> OK, right now, that's easier. So I want, shoot, which one do I want? Backgrounds? Yeah, good. So here I just have backgrounds uh, showing, and it's transparent. But so for this, ready for just click one of your sections and just pick a color here, this little thing that says transparent, and just pick any old color you want. I'll pick uh, blue. And then, of course, when you click that for the background, your entire section becomes that color, and you see that it spans edge to edge of your viewport. Um, now, again, if you were just, for example, if you were to just do, like, I'll show you, if I were to do a section here, uh, and put it like on the bottom here and it spans edge and there's no container in here. I'll just show you what this happens is if I were to take like a, um, a paragraph and just move it inside that section, do you guys see how it spans the whole width there edge to edge? Well, that's no fun. Like you're never gonna have a paragraph that just goes the whole thing edge to edge. But if I take that paragraph and I grab it and I move it inside a container, well then that's more sort of what we're talking about. You want your text to be bounded on those sides like that. So I'll just delete this section here. Um, now what's interesting here is that as soon as before when we added this blue color here, did you guys see up here there's a thing here called selector? This is basically your CSS class. So by, by us choosing a color here, uh, it automatically assigned this section a class of section. And now any other uh, section that I click on that I assign this class to, it will have the same color. So I'll show you an example here. So I'm going to pick this section right here. It's the third one down. I'll click on this one. And do you see up here where it says select class? Well, we only have one because we only just made that one and you can see it actually says down here. Do you guys see that? Well, if I click this, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, exactly. And any qualities, so like when I have this section um, chosen here, anything that I do for this, like spacing, for example, I'm going to add a bunch of padding here. You'll notice that anything I do to the one of the purple, because the other one has the same class of section, it gets the same treatment, but this white one here doesn't get that treatment. But if I were to click here on this middle one and say section, then it has that same spacing above and below the container. Because this, this is our original container. And let's make this a little easier to see here. So for the container, I'm going to come in here and just make it be a white background, just so you can see that. And I'll do the same thing here. I'll make this be a class of container. And I'll make this be a class of container. And then so that way, again, anything that now I do to one of these, I do to all of them. So container, uh, I'm going to just drag some more stuff in here. This paragraph that I had before, I'm just going to drag this paragraph into this container here. Just click and drag. You guys saw that? I can move it to this one if I want to. I can move it to this one. Uh, but the idea here is that now, like again, I don't like how I like how the container sort of has some some padding around it, but I don't like how the um, paragraph is all sort of bunched up in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure. And if you look down here. At the very bottom, this is your, uh, your DOM tree. So this is the elements. You have your body, your section, your container, your paragraph. And as you go, this is a parent element. And as you go down, you get to the individual children elements. And that way, you can select something there. That's my paragraph. That's my container. And you can see uh, on the right-hand side where when I choose this, uh, it chooses a paragraph. But then I click on container. It chooses my container there. So just real simple. So let's say, how much padding should we give this guy here? Let's say, so padding is the inside of something and margin is the outside. I'm not going to get into the details of that for our purposes. That's just a CSS rule that you probably never need to learn. But I'm just going to do this. I'm going to just click and drag. And you can see I'm going to make some room that way. And I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it and make some room this way. And I'm going to click and drag and make some room this way. And all of a sudden, that looks a lot better than um, what we had before. So just really simple. Again, all sort of you can just do this as you're clicking and dragging. Um, and then the idea here is that if you want to actually click this, you can put in whatever number you want, or you can, they have some suggestions for you. 100. Whoa, that's really big here. But again, uh, what's neat too is when you click on this and you hover over it, it shows you this is the padding in green. Do you guys see that? So you can sort of see where you get spacing from. And then there's a margin below it. I'm going to get rid of that just so that it, there it goes. So this is my little paragraph. And because I've made changes to my paragraph, you can see that it has a class of paragraph. Of course, I don't have to stick with that. I could just call this whatever I wanted. Rename that and just call that um, you know, body text or whatever. And then it shows up right there. So that's, that's sort of the basics, too, of, of just adding things. And whenever you're building something, you just start from a section and a container. And then within your container, you can drag all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to drag another paragraph in there. Let's do a heading, actually, first. So we'll put a heading inside of our container. And we will call it um, my fancy website. And uh, same deal. I don't really like how the, um, 
spacing is like that, so I'm going to add it on the side here. But you'll see that rather than have to do it on each one of these, which is sort of a hassle, I can instead remove all of the padding from this guy. And I can instead just put padding on the container, which will just show you that will make life a little simpler. So I turn that all to zero. Turn that to zero, okay. And we'll do the same thing for this guy. Turn this to zero. So now, if I grab the container, which is the parent, so that's one, one, one size larger here, then I can actually just do padding here. And then that way, anything inside, uh, regardless of whether it's a headline or a, a paragraph or whatever, we'll just have that spacing. So now I've created like spacing around it. Which again, uh, we're talking about design, it's just a series of boxes. <laughs> it's just the most basic level. I know this is really elementary, but don't worry, we're, we're gonna get fancier in a second here. This is just to introduce you to the user interface. So, so far we've seen uh, this guy here, this is adding stuff. You can see there's also uh, columns. We're not gonna use columns today. Uh, they just introduced this one called grid, which is a new CSS uh, thing. And once you do grid, you never go back. So we don't really need columns even anymore. Div block, I told you, is that sort of fundamental element. It's just an empty block that you can put things in. There's other stuff here too, like button. Like I'll just drag a button over here. And then it's like, oh look, there's my button text. And then that could be a button for like, click here to subscribe or learn whatever. And then again, if I were to click on this and give it a class of let's say button, then I could do some stuff to it. Like I could change the color. Um, I could change the spacing around it. Um, and then now anything else that I were to do. So for example, if I take like another button here and I drag it into this guy and then I say, let's make this be a class of button, then it's gonna have those same characteristics. And then as you make a change to one, it makes a change everywhere. So you're basically writing CSS, but all visually, which is, which is fun. Uh, so then looking down the list here, you can see there's your typography. So these are basic building blocks. There's your heading, paragraph, text link, rich text, uh, text block. Again, some of these are sort of duplicates or not really duplicates, but like uh, redundant a little bit. But it, again, we're not gonna go into too much detail. If you wanna do an image, um, that's, you know, that's sort of fun here. Drag an image in. Uh, we'll say choose an image and um, I'll upload from my computer and I have my Glamper assets. We're gonna pick the Google logo and we'll upload that. And then there's my Google logo. And so now I have an image here and again, I can do all kinds of things to it. I can make it larger, smaller, um, change different things. Uh, and by default, of course, when you're doing HTML, things just go in a line across and that's usually what you want, uh, but not always. And so we'll talk about that in a second, but uh, oops. So again, just scrolling down here, there's different stuff you can add. You can drop in a video, you can drop in a YouTube, you just paste it in, it'll automatically fetch the embed for you. Forms we're gonna do, that was part of the description for tonight is, is how you can hook things up together. So if you guys had like an email newsletter and you know, you're launching an app and you're like, hey, sign up for my newsletter, we're gonna go live pretty soon. You guys should keep abreast of all the latest updates. So we'll look at that and there's some more form stuff. Um, the components is probably the most fun. This is more like more complex stuff, but I'm not gonna get too much into that. We're gonna use the nav bar in a little bit, but beyond that, Again, just trying to get you familiar with this. But um, so at this point, we're sort of <laughs> we're sort of pretty far removed from uh, from Glamper. Uh, but we'll <laughs> I'll show you how I how I got to this point right here. So same deal. You can see here. I want you to sort of anticipate. Can you guys see that this whole one here that takes up the the whole vision of the whole like square of the the screen? That's just one section. And then within that section, um, there's a couple of containers. Uh, and that section, you'll notice it's like the section just happens to end right at the bottom of my screen. And that's something that we'll see too, is that you can actually set the height of something to be whatever the viewport height is of the thing you're looking at. And that way, no matter what device it is, it'll always be exactly the size of their screen. And you'll see that a lot. And it's a fancy trick. I'll show you how to do that. Um, this section here is not, not that big. It's, um, um, sorry, that was something I was just playing around with later. Let me get rid of this. Get rid of, yep, good. So this is just a section. And within the section, there's a container. And within that container, there's a grid called brands. Um, you can see down here in my little, my little trail. And then within that, I'll show you when you edit a grid here, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, it's really cool. It's uh, doing grid stuff with CSS is like the easiest way to lay out uh, on the planet. If you were ever doing this in like, if you guys have web development experience, you'd know you'd have to do some floats to get these all to stack right, or you'd have to use Flexbox, which is awesome and I love it. Um, but also uh, if you have access to grid like this, it just makes life so much easier. Um, you can add an extra column like this if you want to or whatever, but I'm gonna delete this. So. Oops, so delete, delete column, there you go. Uh, and so I'll just say done down here. Uh, another thing here, this is just another section. Uh, so I've got, so one section here is the blue, two sections here, three here, this gray with the image, and then four down here. So I just have four sections down the page, the full width. And then within each section, there's a container. And then I just have some text and some, 
some images and links and stuff. So again, I, you can do this in about an hour. Uh, and you can do like real professional work. And that's, that's what, and again, you don't have to be dependent on like, oh, it's gotta be this WordPress template. I don't wanna use it like this. My wife was trying to get uh, WordPress to work the other day. I think like, cause any UNC website has to use WordPress. Although some of the Keenan Flagler stuff is Squarespace, but even that is such a hassle to get WordPress to do what you want it to do. It's just sort of like um, pulling teeth, but um, so yeah. So uh, I'm gonna dig into this a little bit more depth to like show you exactly how I did it individual pages. And I want you guys to follow along so that you'll have the experience of it. But before I do, we're sort of reaching the 30 minute mark here. What, what uh, questions do you have so far as, as, you know, as far as a ton of information that I just dumped at you? Why don't you let me know what you're thinking? Go ahead. Is there a way to make like one instance of a button have a different feature from like the other mm -hmm. ones? Yeah, it, sh it sure wouldn't be very helpful if you couldn't do that, right? Because <laughs> you just kind of think you do all the time. So I'll show you how you do that. You make a combo class. So do you see on this one right here, it says store button. Uh, well, let's go back to our little example here just because we have this red one. I'll delete this image because we don't need it. So you see this one has class of button, this one has class of button. Well, so the thing is, is that you can stack classes. So here I could just say button uh, green. And then now anything I do to this button green combo class is not going to affect the main one. And then that's it. Yeah. So again, you can you can do you could do button green um, uh, big <laughs> or whatever you know, and then make the text be like you know whatever you want, kind of thing. Yeah. And then you could have another one that was button green that wouldn't have the big text, kind of thing. So yeah, good question. Other questions? How many of you guys so far have already started your website for your app? Like, are you at the stage yet where you're actually ready to talk about it, to promote it, to sort of generate some enthusiasm, anything like that? Is it too still early stage? Do you even know what you're building yet? Have you, <laughs> you got to more or less? Uh, well, you know, some, some funny thing is an exercise like this is actually really helpful because in trying to describe to the world what it is, it sort of gives you some clarity as far as what it is that you're trying to build, what you're trying to do. The other thing too is that you guys know, um, if you want to sort of gain interest, you need to be writing about it. So a lot of successful um, apps and, and projects that are gonna launch, you'll sort of have like this uh, once a week if you can sort of post an update and it could be like, yeah, I finished my makeathon and I won $1,000 and uh, we're off to the races. And then like another week it'd be like, hey, we hit this milestone and stuff. And so if you have really people that are interested in what you're doing, then you sort of have to kind of keep, keep them up to date on stuff like that. And you need a place to put it. So um, you know, this is a good example, but it's just for fun. Let's see, now that we got this, <laughs> this goofy looking website, let's click on the iPad here and you can see that that's um, the section of course spans. And if this were on like a giant monitor or whatever, um, you'd have all that blue all the way across and you still just have your fixed width right there. Um, and you can, you can, if you don't want it to be this width, you can change that of course, if you'd like. Um, but, um, uh, if you see on the iPad here, then this gives us a sense of sort of going down the page. And then let's see if we go down to this one. Hey, not too bad, not too bad. It's looking still like you could work it. And then there you go. So uh, our button text is sort of overlapping. I think probably that's too big uh, for, um, for mobile phone size. So let's get rid of that class and just go back to the regular button or whatever. Uh, but to your question in the back, you're asking, um, you know, how do you do like the mobile version? Well, for the most part, it sort of does itself. You know, like I haven't done anything here, but already this works like it's expected. Um, but you know, as you go down, you'll sort of want to tweak this. Like we don't need these huge margins on either side. So you could probably change that just for this. And what's interesting is, so you'll see here, I have this big margin, uh, or I should say a padding around the text here. But if I go down to the phone view and I say, okay, this is way too much here. I've got 57 pixels. So let me, let me, let me make that a little smaller because on a mobile phone, you don't need quite so much. Well, what's nice is that only keeps it on the mobile version. When I jump back to the laptop, it's still what it was before. Because the idea is that you want to make those changes, but you don't want it to apply everywhere. Does that make sense? Go ahead. Um, can you show me an idea, like, how do you, like, move, like, the text within the container? Can I, like, move them everywhere you want? Yeah, there's a couple ways to do that. So that's where we get into a little bit more advanced. So, like, what, what is it that you'd want to do with the text? Let's start there. For example, like, uh, if you go back to, like, the web version, like, could you, like, um, if I want to, like, move, like, my title and text, like, a little bit awkward, how do I do that? Well, there's a couple ways. So I have, first of all, a giant padding around this thing in this container. So the first thing to do is just make your, make your padding a little smaller. You see what I mean? Uh -huh. And then that will do that. But at the same time, um, or you could make it zero. Um, like I can just... Then you would do, so you would control that with the margin on that individual element. 
So like, let's say I'm going to Command-Z, Command-Z. So I have this huge, um, what is that, 63 pixels above in this container. Oh, no, it's right, it's 57. Um, and actually, my heading has some as well. So I'm just going to take away the, this, the default on my heading here. Um, it gives you some, this orange is what it starts with, but I always get that to zero because it's like, I never know where those margins are coming from. And that way I can just reset to zero and it makes it easier. So you want to move this up, but you want to keep the space here. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah? Uh, like, like I want to keep the like, size of the container, but move the text upward, like, like closer to like, the upper border. So I would, if I understand what you're saying, so one thing is you could do a margin normally pushes things away, but if you do a negative margin, you can move things the other direction uh, is one way to do it. So a positive margin, reset this back to zero here. Uh, a positive margin, sorry, uh, pushes things away uh, and a negative margin just goes the opposite direction. So you can see I have this margin here and if I make this margin 20, it's gonna push my headline down. If I go 40, it keeps pushing it down. But if I made that be negative 60, it'll go the other direction. So I think that's what you're asking, but I'm gonna call, I'll come back to you later and we'll, we'll work on that a little bit. Um, there's, there's, unfortunately, when it comes to this kind of stuff, there's probably a half dozen different ways to do the same thing, and that's, but we'll, we'll get to that, don't worry. Okay, so I'm gonna delete this stuff here because um, we don't need any of this nonsense. I'm gonna start over. So here, I'm gonna give you a section, and I'm gonna drag it in. And this section here, we're gonna call, uh, what should our like, main section for that first, you know, this guy right here, the big one that takes up the whole screen, what should we call it? Give me a name, we're gonna give it a class. Heading, you got it. So the section is called heading. If we actually have other headings later, that's gonna be confusing. No, I'm just uh, oh, let me show you something too here. Well, we'll get to that in a second, sorry, okay. So we are on our section here. I can't really see that, can I? Oh, you know what, do I? Why is that not showing up for me? Oh, it's because I actually have one called heading. Uh, so scratch that, <laughs> let, me, let me do this here. Let me do clean up, remove. Okay, now I'm gonna name it heading because I actually had something called heading and that was giving me trouble. So we'll do this like this, okay, boom. So heading. So the thing, thing is, is that you can control the width of it. You can control, so like the section is gonna go full width like that, but I wanna control the height. You guys see over here in the corner, there's height. You can fix something, height, and you can just say I want it to be like 600 pixels or whatever. And you can see this is 600 pixels. I'm gonna give it a background just for now so that you can sort of keep track of it. We'll just do like a light gray or whatever. Okay, so this is our section here. And you can see I made it be 600 pixels. And that's great. Um, but you also have the option to say, well, I don't necessarily want it to be fixed always at 600 pixels. I might just want it to be um, a minimum height of something. Uh, and so that's where you have the op opportunity to say, like, I want this to be at least 600, but if there's more stuff and it makes it go bigger, that's okay. Whereas if it were fixed at 600, no matter how much stuff you put in there, it would never get any bigger or smaller. But the, the thing that we're gonna do here is I'm gonna give this special unit here called VH. And you see I type that in there, and, it, and it's, if you click on that, you can see those are your options. So when you're doing a unit, you can have 100 pixels, 100%, 100 Ms, 100 VH, 100 VW, and auto. And again, it's beyond the scope of this to look at what all those are. But for my purposes here, VH is vertical height. And it's a really, really neat way to take something and make it be the full height of the screen. So see, I'm gonna do this and make it be 50 VH, and that'll be exactly half of my viewport. And so that's like if I'm looking at a phone here, it's gonna be exactly half of my phone screen. If I'm looking at an iPad, it's exactly half of my iPad. If I come to my laptop, it's exactly half. And so the VH unit is a really nice way. You could probably get there with 100%. Um, it appears that I did not get there. So let's stick with um, VH, because I know that works. So we do this here, and then I'm gonna add another section below this so that um, you guys can see that we actually have something we can scroll down. So I have to add it below my this section here. Um, I know that, give me another section here. All right, go like this. Okay, so now you can see what I did was I added another section below this, um, and then I didn't show you this already here, but um, this is our little style panel. It's a little uh, paintbrush right here. You can just click the S key. Uh, it's sort of like if you have your four fingers on ASDF, um, a is your, is your adding stuff, S is your style panel, D is your properties, settings, F is your uh, navigator. So you can actually see all the things in your stuff, and we'll get to that in a second. So A, S, D, F, A, S, D, F, which is really handy. D, F, you can do G and I think H, yeah, sure enough. 
So A, S, D, F, G, H, which is fun. Um, but back to here. So this guy is 100 VH, and that's exactly what we did here. We made this one be 100 VH. And you'll notice there's two things about this differently. What are the two things that you notice about this, this uh, full screen section here beyond the fact that it's the full screen? What are two other properties about it that uh, obviously are different? Like if we wanted to make this, what would we need to do for this big blue box? Go ahead. There is a color gradient. Excellent. Yeah, there exactly. There's a color. You see there's like a certain color blue here and then there's like a different color blue down here. And it's not even just like top to bottom. It's actually diagonal, which is pretty simple. We can, we can, we can do all kinds of stuff if you want. So I'm going to come down here and you can see I have linear gradient and background pattern. Um, and actually if I just make this little eyeball here, it's the exact same in Figma. It's a little eyeball. If I get rid of the linear gradient, then you'll see that this is just a, a repeating image that is, um, I got from, I think I got it from Hero Patterns. Let me see, yeah. So this is a fun website here. You can just download um, background stuff. I think it's this topography one here. Uh, and you can just repeat it and it'll, it'll just repeat as a little pattern, but you, know, you, can get, you can do some fun stuff here. So you just drag these into your, uh, into your web flow and you can do cool patterns and stuff. So I just did that here, um, but that doesn't look very attractive. So in addition to the background pattern, which I will hide for the moment, I'll come back to my linear gradient and then you can see here's just the color without the, the stuff behind it. And it's under those backgrounds here. And linear gradient, gradient, you can see I click here and it shows you, it says, what color should it be on this side? What color should it be on this side? And what angle do you want? Well, so you can set the angle here. And so I'll set it this way. Uh, and then, and it went to 0%, which is sort of goofy. So go back to 90. Oh, I just did it on that one. Wait, why is that giving me here? Let's see. So my color is down to zero. Oh, let's go back to 100. Oh. Well, I'm not sure what my angle is being fussy here. I will look into that in a second. But usually you just move the angle and it just moves uh, wherever you want it to be. So let's come back to here. OK, so we'll do this on the other one. You'll see how we got to here in a second. So. Uh, what we will do is, um, you don't have to do it. I will, um, I have this on my desktop here. Um, and I will go to this and you can see it's background pattern. It's just this um, image here that I downloaded and you guys can do the same thing. So if you come over here to heropatterns.com, do you guys see that hero patterns? And you can do the same thing and then you can just download this um, topography one. And um, we don't want any colors. Um, so we'll just do foreground, make it white. Um, actually, foreground, let's make it black. And then the background, uh, we want to be nothing. Or we want it to be white anyway. There we go. And then you just um, say download. Boop. And then now that'll go to your downloads folder. And then when you come into here, so we'll take now this guy and we will say, okay, I have this, this, this uh, heading section. I'll come over here to my little style panel and I'll scroll down a bit. And then down here, you see I have a color, but I'm gonna add an image. You guys see down here in the bottom corner, sort of my mouse is image and gradient. So I'm gonna say, okay, I want a background image. And you see there's this, this image, there's um, linear gradient, which we did. There's radial gradient, I believe. And then what is this one? color overlay, which is fun. We won't be doing that for today, but so choose an image and that is in my downloads folder. So I will say upload, I will go to downloads. Uh, it is a zip file, that's no fun. And then I will say, yep, give me that one guy. And then I will say, I want it to repeat um, I don't want it to X. Um, it's awfully hard to see, isn't it? I'll probably have to get rid of that color. Oh, there it goes. Wow, I just took a second. Um, yeah, well, so it just starts in the top left corner. And uh, for our purposes, that's fine. It tiles. If you went this little X right here, that's just the, the single image by itself. But then there's an option here. I want it to be repeating, and they call that tiling. And so it goes like that. And then uh, I want it to be not fixed, and that's it. So I here have my background here, and then I, my color, um, I'll just make like a similar blue to what I have over here, and I forget what color that is, so I'm gonna just grab it from the, the color picker. It is, come on. 
That color is this guy, copy and paste. Come in here for color, paste, there we go. And then the actual um, image itself, you know, we can, we can make it be, um, uh, I'm gonna make the, I'm trying to remember how I did this here. Come on. Um, so I have the gradient overlaid that way with the background. Okay, that's what I did. So I will say image, gradient, and I'll just do a solid color. I'll make it be the same one. That's fine. And then that's fine. And then I'm going to put the typography above it because you see how, how the, the, the order of these matter. So I've got the typography one uh, above and the linear gradient below. If I put the linear gradi gradient above, then you can't see it um, because you can see through this guy. And then um, I'm going to go like this, but then I'm going to make the linear gradient be, um, I'm going to give it like a 80% opacity. There we go. And so that sort of approximates what we just did. And I realize that was sort of fast here, but um, we can also do the same on the other side. We can say, give me this color and make that be about um, 80%. And then you'll be able to see. Uh, just make it be like a different color blue or something. There we go. That's approximately the same. I don't know exactly which the blues are, but it doesn't matter. You get the idea here. And then the angle itself, um, I can just change the angle of my gradient. So I can make the dark be sort of in that bottom right corner just by changing the angle. And you see I have like lighter at the top here and it goes down to the bottom right. And then you can see that's approximately the same here. Uh, it goes from this whatever color blue to this other color blue from top left to bottom right. And that's basically what we did here. So again, this is um, just showing you how you might do something similar. So I know that was a lot, so I'll just take a break there. So does it make sense how we added these here? I added both the, um, the backgrounds and we made it repeating. And then we put a linear gradient over it and we changed the opacity, so it's three steps. So which steps don't make sense? Go ahead. Can you just show one more time how you applied the opacity? Yeah. So uh, over here in linear gradient, do you see uh, when you click on the color, this A is your alpha channel. Can you see that on yours? Yeah. And so you can set that, I made it to be 80%. And then, um, and then you get rid of that one. And then that's your, your left side color. And then your other color down here you click on this guy and it gives you your other one and click on that and same thing, that's um, 100, I'm gonna make that be 80. There we go, that's what I wanted. So you can see, it's, uh, they're both 80%, but it changes color from top left. And again, this is just, you don't, I mean, you don't have to make a design exactly like this. I just wanted to show you guys how easy it is to just play around with this kind. Of, I mean, you can have fun all day long with this. It's just a blast to do this kind of stuff. So you see, we're, we're like most of the way there <laughs> with this whole thing right here. Did you have a question? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Other questions so far? Come back here. Please don't be shy. I know that's a lot of stuff. This is complicated, guys, so please don't, don't feel like anything you can ask is, is too, uh, too elementary. I went through that kind of fast. Uh, and again, you don't have to do exactly like this, um, but I just wanted to show you how I made that and it's pretty simple. And so even if you just have like a solid color or whatever, the main thing I wanted you to take away from this is we have a section and we made it full height. And then at that point, there's a couple things that we can do. So are you guys ready to move on to the next bit? Feel good? So we go to the add column here and uh, I'm gonna jump down to uh, the components. And all of these components are things that you could build yourself out of just you know divs and sections and containers and stuff, but they sort of give them to you for free just to make things easy. So there's a slider component, which is real fun. That's, you know, you're, you have like an image and you, you know, go side to side and it even gives you, I mean, I'll even show you if you like put this in here. Um, it even gives you like the little things on the side that you can click on uh, and the little buttons down there. And so you could make each of these slides be an image or whatever. And so it's got a slider just sort of built in. You could do, um, I'm not gonna do them for our purposes. You've got um, a light box, which is fun. And so that's where this would be a thumbnail. And if you just clicked it, you could make it like be a bit like blow up and make like a bigger image or whatever. They call it a light box or a modal window. Uh, but for our purposes, I'm gonna come down here and you guys see nav bar. It is 
uh, last item on the second row. So click that. We're going to just drag that anywhere inside of our section, which is anywhere. You can literally just drag it and let go. And then it just gives you this nav bar at the top here for free. And the fun thing about this is, is that you've got a couple of navigation items here at the top. And you've got a place for a logo, which if you had like multiple pages, you could make that like come back to the home page, which is pretty standard for most websites, as you know. Uh, but the fun thing about this is this nav bar, again, you could make this yourself, but it's sort of a fun way to just throw this in. And then when you get down to iPad view, do you see what happened right here? It automatically made you like a little hamburger menu sort of thing, uh, which is fun. So if I go back to the laptop view and I have this little thing here, uh, and I realize you can't sort of click this to actually make it open here because in this view, you want to like actually click on stuff and change their properties. But if you wanted to see how it worked, go to your iPad view. And then over here, do you see this little eyeball that's next to our page? Because we only just have one page right now, the home page. But you see this little eyeball here? I want you to click on that little eyeball. And what it does is it sort of removes the, the palettes that it, and it, it basically just makes it so you can interact with it. So now I can actually click on this as, as a real thing. This is sort of like with Figma, when you clicked on the prototype thing and it actually gave you like a window where you could click around and stuff. Um, then you can actually see how this kind of stuff works. And if we actually had other pages, um, we could do that. And so if you guys want later on, I'll show you if you had multiple pages, it's really simple. You just click on like your about page uh, and I'll turn this off. So it's this little eyeball menu here, a toggle preview. You guys all see that? So in here, um, you can um, make like, and what I'll do is, I'm just gonna duplicate a page for fun. Um, you don't have to do this. I'm just gonna do this really quick. We'll call it about. And so I just created a second page here and it's blank. Um, but what we're gonna do is, we're gonna, I'm gonna go back to my other page, home. I'm gonna copy uh, my heading section, command C. I'm gonna go to my about, I'm gonna do command V. Oops. And then I paste this all in here. So this is my about page. And you'll see now, and they look the same, of course, so that's not really helpful. So let's make this a little different. Let's do, um, just so for the sake of demonstration here, I'm gonna pull in a, um, well, I'll tell you what, I'll just remove the um, typography on that. So okay, so our about page is smooth and our home page has the lines, just so you can tell that, oh, I did it on both pages, dang. So okay, let me do, go back to this. That's not very helpful, is it? So what I will do is, Oh, now it's the full, don't worry about it. Um, go back to about, I'm just gonna drag in on my about page, I'm gonna drag in just a heading here, and we're just gonna say about, so that way you can see the difference here. Okay, so on the about page we have an about, and on the home page we don't have an about. But I can come in here, and then when I click on this nav link, the, anything that you click on, this is how you make it look, but then there's like settings, there's a little gear icon, so I'm gonna click on that next one here, and you can see it's like, what do you wanna do with this link? So this brush is how it looks. So I could make that have a different background. I could change the size, the font, whatever. That's how it looks, the style panel. But if I come over here to the settings panel, it looks like a little gear icon. Then I can say link settings. Do you want it to go somewhere? Well, I could just have it go to google.com. And then um, if I were to preview this and hover over this, can you guys see in the bottom left corner there? You see how it says google.com? So that would actually go there. I'm not gonna click it, but um, What's more fun is that when you actually have this and you say, you know what, this next one here, a page, I want you to go to the about page. So now when I'm on home and I go to this here, I just created a way that I can click on this link and it'll take me to the about page and then now it says the about or whatever. So again, not something that you need to learn. I just wanted to show you that that's, that's one way that you can actually start creating pages that link to each other, which is fun. And again, I could, with one click, I can just publish this to the web right now and then this would be like a live website and anybody could visit it. That's, that's what's sort of fun about this is that right here it just says, um, Nathan's fantastic. In fact, you guys can do this too if you wanna do it for fun. Go to this publish one and then of course custom domain, that's, you have to pay to like link your actual whatever.com. But just for fun, you guys see that this says publish to selected domains. Go ahead and, and click that and then it'll take a second to actually spin up that site and then do you see this little, little arrow icon that's like to the right of that? Go ahead and click on that and now your site is live for the world that anybody can see it and you could send this link to somebody and that would like they could actually click around so i'm going to click on the about page and look here's the about page and i can go i didn't set up the home but it would go if i did it that way i can go back a page and then anyway so again like we you already have a website like it doesn't look like much but that was it if this is live you could just do this right now uh so i'm going to go back to our little designer view here but uh anywho so uh basically just you see the difference here is that um this this goes the full width here so this nav bar, I'm going to give a class of nav bar because I don't want this gray background. I want it to be invisible. 
So now that it's class navbar, I can t come down to color and I can just say, don't, don't give me any color at all. And then that's where you can see here, I don't have any color behind this one. I just have the logo, I have these two links here, get the app and emergency bug report. So I'm gonna come over here and this, instead of home, about, and contact, I'm gonna create a, a class for this one here, navlink, I'm gonna call it, how about navlink? And I'm gonna make sure the other ones are also navlink so that if I make a change to one, it makes a change to all of them. And contact we don't need, so I just delete it. So I have home and about, and there's nav links. Uh, down here, I'm gonna change the color. It's hard to read that against that background. So I'm gonna change the color of this to white. So that now you can see home and about. They're also a little too small. So I'm gonna make these be like 18 pixels. All right, let's go a little bigger. Let's make them 21. And then, um, how else we do here? Get the app, emergency bug report. So I'm gonna actually just type the name here. I'm gonna say get the app and emergency bug report. Uh, and then for my logo here, um, this is this little one that came here, it's called brand. It's just an image, a link image that they include. You don't have to use it, but I'm gonna go ahead and drag in an image. So you guys do the same thing. So for this brand one here, come over here to your ad and then scroll down a little bit and you'll see image is down here under media. So I'm gonna drag this in here and it'll say, okay, well, what image do you want? Well, you have like anything you've uploaded you have in your little media viewer here. So I've only uploaded two things. I'm gonna upload an actual, um, is it desktop, Glamper, and then my logo is logo. And whoa, it's gigantic. So I'm gonna just make it be like 100 pixels. That's too small. Let's make it be 200 pixels. Now we're talking. Now we're cooking with gas. And then this is actually a link here. And I can make this just go to, let's say the home page. So now if you click on this Glamper, um, get the app you could make be a link to like whatever your, um, if it's like iOS, it's like an iTunes.com, something, something, something to like get your that. If it's Android, you can have a link to the Play Store. I don't know exactly um, how they generate those, but you can just put it in and it goes right there. Uh, but yeah, so you guys wanna see it, go ahead and click on your little preview here. And you can sort of see that um, I can get to my, uh, uh, I guess these links don't work yet, but this would go back to my homepage here. So, oh, there's my homepage. That's fun. So that was the about page, but we'll go back here. So, oh, that was on the about. That's so funny. Yeah. So, but we'll just do it right here. So, can you guys already see how we're beginning to get to where we were? Uh, the font that I used on um, on these guys, I think, is Montserrat, Montserrat or something. That's just a free Google font. So I'm gonna come back over here to the style panel. Do you guys at this point, do you know how to change a font? Could you do that on your own? Where would you do it? You got it. And I, what should we pick? You can pick whatever you want. You got any favorites? How about this goofy script one, huh? No. What do you think, yeah. So these are all free Google fonts that you can use. You can also upload your own if you had them, but um, what do you guys feel? Any, any, any preferences? You have any favorites? Okay. Which one? Okay. You got it. Yeah, we'll pretend it's like a meme. It's like, uh, in fact, we should do it all caps too, just to make it be get the app have a good time. Uh, that's awfully hard to read, but that's <laughs> because my um, this guy's turned off. There we go. So I, I turned back on my linear gradient here. So you can see just looking at that by itself um, is sort of harsh. So then that way we can do this. And then, um, yeah, so we're just cooking right along. So, so we're basically um, working our way from the top to the bottom. And so I'm gonna show you guys now how we could get these guys centered uh, in the middle of this page here. Uh, and again, it's sort of like I'm gonna be introducing some other concepts like Flexbox and Grid and stuff. And again, I'm not expecting you to memorize this or learn this. I'm just showing you that these are all basic CSS things that any web designer would use and know. And you don't have to memorize it. You can just click and drag and it makes things really simple. Uh, and again, if this is if you, something you feel like you really wanna get good at or learn about or something, you can go down that rabbit hole. I just wanna give you quick and dirty tools so that you can manage stuff real easy. You can be as simple or as complicated as you want. But ultimately, I would love for you guys to have control of your own web destiny and not have to rely on someone to do things that you wanna do. So what we're gonna do here is, you see that in the same section, within this here, we've got a container. It's called container. 
Uh, over here, this other one, so we've got our style panel, our settings panel, and what do they call this? The navigator. So the navigator, you can see it shows you sort of how things are, uh, like a, it's basically like a layer panel, more or less, and you can actually drag things around from within here if you wanted to. So like this guy here, this paragraph and this heading, I can put this paragraph above the heading, just like that, and now the paragraph's above the heading. I can also do it from here, and I can just click and drag it below the heading but I can do it from here as well. So put the paragraph above the heading. Again, we're just moving boxes. Welcome to web design. <laughs> That's like 90% of it. So I will take this and move it. So let's make this too. So in this guy, we're gonna put a container in. So just grab a container, throw it in there anywhere, it doesn't matter. And you see by default, it just comes down here and you're like, okay, well that's cool, but like I want it in the middle. How do I do that? Well, what we're gonna do is we take this uh, major setting, uh, section heading, sorry, that we have, and uh, to center things vertically and horizontally, we're gonna use Flexbox. Uh, and again, this is not something that I, I need you to master right now, but if you do it along with me, then you'll see how it works and you'll just know that this is something you can do yourself. It's sort of surprisingly hard to, to center things vertically in websites. I know you'd think that would be like really easy. It's trivially easy in like Illustrator, or Photoshop, whatever, but to do it on a website, until now has been quite hard, but we're gonna do it together. So what we do is make sure you've got your main section. Ours here is called heading. Yours might be called something different, but make sure that's selected. And then under layout, instead of block, I want you to change it to flex. And you'll see that it goofed up a bunch of stuff. That's okay. I want you to change it from uh, horizontal to vertical. And you'll see that'll sort of restore this guy. So. It did have them before where they were stacking from left to right, but with vertical, I want them now to stack from top to bottom. And then the only thing we have to do is um, this little guy down here, justify. If you're following along with me, again, I took my major section here heading. I came down here to layout. I changed it from block to flex. And then this little thing, justify. This guy here is center. And then it moves, uh, of course it moved this guy as well. So I'm gonna have to move him up, but let me just do this. Uh, alignment. Let's have him go. Um, well, I'll tell you what, just for now, I'm going to do this just for fun. And I'm going to do absolute position. And we're going to say uh, there. Okay. Um, so this is what happens when you just have a single element. I threw this guy back up there just because um, he was tagging along. Um, and again, don't, don't worry terribly why that is. I'll be happy to show you once. I'm gonna set you loose for a little bit um, and I'll come around and we'll look at some of these things together. But I just wanted to show you that by taking this guy and choosing justify center, we have this in the middle and this is our container. And you can see within here, we have a div block. And this div block is, is there a width on this? I forget how I did this, let's see. The grid does not have a width. So we're gonna then come over here and now that we have our container centered here and it's really small, I'm gonna take my grid and throw it inside my little container. And then I want, um, I think we just want, um, actually before I do that, just make this a little clearer. Let's make our container here. We're gonna call it um, middle container. And we're gonna give it a width of, um, bless you. This guy. How did I get? Let me just check this real quick here. Do remember what I did? So that's left. Oops. So I have that. I do have that horizontal. How did I do that? Oh, I did it this way. Say horizontal and then aha. Uh -huh. There we go. Okay. So I will come back to this in a second here. But here is our middle container. And just for fun, I'm gonna throw some text in there. And we will see, there we go, there's a heading and it will take the size of whatever the things we have in here are. Um, so let's do this, like, I'm just gonna copy my text here just to make life simple. So I have a heading here, I'm gonna paste it in here. 
And then I have um, a paragraph here. I'm going to copy and paste it under here. And I will make my heading to be white so we can see it a little better. I'll do the same thing here. And there is my white. There it is. And then I'm going to say uh, for this middle container, um, got it. Um, you can see I've just got them separately here. I've just got a heading two and paragraph two. Uh, it actually occurs to me that maybe we should just use a div. Is that what I did? One second, guys. I got to remember what I did here. So that is actually a container. Yeah, it is a container. Okay. And then I'm going to take this guy and show you what happens when you just take an image and throw it in here. And things all stack by default, top to bottom. So the main question that you have is, uh, if things stack from top to bottom, how do you get things to go side by side? Uh, and again, it's beyond the scope of what we're talking about today. There's all kinds of ways you can get things to go sideways. But for our purposes, again, I just wanted to show you what, what grid looks like. So this is what it looks like by, by default. Uh, I'm going to take another stab at putting this grid in here. And then um, you can see that I've got this two by two grid. And this FR here is sort of a weird looking unit. You can make that be um, um, like something else. Like if you don't want FR, you could actually do like a fixed pixel value or percentage. So you could say like, I want this to be, um, let's say uh, 20%. Uh, and then I want this one over here to be, um, well, obviously whatever's remaining, but it'll be 80%. And so rather than have to calculate that, what this thing called fractional unit is, this FR, what's nice about a fractional unit is um, it basically says, if you have 20% here, then whatever's left over, if it's one fractional unit, it just takes up whatever available space is left over. Um, for our purposes, just I'm gonna go back to the default and just make this be, oops, just make this be, uh, and I'm going through this really quick, guys. I'm sorry, let me just go to, back to FR here. And so that'll just be how it started. So with my grid here, and I will take my camping text and move it into here. And I will take my paragraph text and move it into here. I will take my image and I will move it over here. And then on this guy, um, I'm actually gonna say, I want you to span this image here. I have selected here. And you can see here, it says column started, row started. Uh, if you want something to span here, I'm going to take this image and I'm going to say start in row one, but end in row two. And then that way this image here now takes up both of these two. And I can come back here and you can see that a little better once I go back into this grid view here. So uh, that's the foundation of this, is you just drag in a grid and you make as many columns, as blocks as you want. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail about FR here again. It's just basically it takes up as much space as you want it to take up. And I just put this here, this here. I have this image span here. And uh, I'll click Done. And then pretty soon, you can sort of see how it begins to look a little like this. So these guys here, I can do the same thing. I'll edit my grid. And you can see that this is actually, oh, I actually ended up putting all this in just one, one solid one here, which you can do as well. So this is actually a really simple grid. And then I did one FR here. And then I did 0.6 over here. So that, that ends up being um, a fraction of one. So this will become 40% of this. Um, you could just as easily say, you know what, make this just be one. And then there'll be equal sizes like that, which is, of course, you're welcome to do as well. And so those are both now equal one and one. But that sort of looks sort of big. So by making it narrower, you can make it smaller. Uh, so that was a whole mess of stuff, I realized. So let me pause there and just ask you guys. I, a part of this is just you tooling around and running into trouble and then asking me for help. And that's <laughs> what a demo interactive is. So let me just stop here and, and ask where you guys are. Um, so I'm going to come in here. And it just doesn't take very long to start over. So I'm going to do this again. OK. So I've got this guy up here. And you know, just for fun, I'm going to just delete my navigation too, just to, just to make things simpler, because that guy was sort of in the way. So I'm going to start back again with my section here. And I've got um, just back to default. So just delete everything until you're back to your main section, your full height section. And so I'm just going to make things really simple. Um, I'm going to undo this display. We'll go back to how it was, block. And then so I'm right back to where I started about 10 minutes ago. So I'm going to take um, a container. I'm going to throw it in here. 
And then you can see by default, it's just the whatever width it is, and it's at the top of the page. So just if you're having trouble with that, let's just start back to here and do it again. So uh, get rid of the nav, we'll just focus. That, that was probably just introducing too, many, too much complexity. So you have your thing here, you have your container, and the thing we want to do is make this be in the middle of the page. And so there's two ways that we'll do that. The first thing is we click on our main box here, this one we've called it heading, and just change it from block to flex. That's the first thing that you do. Uh, and in fact, that sort of already got us there, but that's only because, let me reset this to zero. There you go. So if you click flex, it should look like this. Do you guys have this long, narrow, skinny one in the middle? Did that happen when you clicked flex? Did not happen, I see shaking head there, yeah. Um, but I'll tell you what, just, just go, um, uh, I'm trying to think if I can anticipate what might have happened. Um, but just go from flex and make sure that it's, um, in this case, do we want it to be horizontal or vertical? Let's just try this and there. And so give you uh, justify, can stay left, but align, you just want it to be in the middle. And so you can go top, you see here, and I'll, I'll just go ahead and put a background in this so you can see what we're doing with this. Let me go to color and just make it be like red or something or whatever, okay. So I just put a little background in here and you can see that when I have heading selected and I'm looking at my flex box here, just align, you can see at the start, I can go top, I can go middle, I can go bottom. So if you have display flex on your heading and you've got anything inside of it, doesn't matter what it is, then you can push things around. You see align the top, align middle, align bottom, or I want you to stretch from top to bottom. That's what this one is. Bottom, middle, top. Are you able to get that to do it? If you make it look exactly the same way where you have flex, horizontal, and then align top, can you get this box to go up to the top? Okay, good. So then you have middle, and then you go to the bottom. Can you at least get to that point? And so flex is basically just a way you give a container and then anything inside the container, you basically give it instructions. You say, I want it to be the left, I want it to be the right, I want it to be up, down, right. So again, this is, this is sort of, um, uh, the main challenge is that we wanted this to be centered exactly like this in the middle of a full screen here. Uh, and, and you know, honestly, if you really wanted to do this in like the simplest way possible, you could potentially not even mess with Flexbox. Uh, I, I think that's important for you to learn, so I wanted to demo it, but just for our purposes, you put this in the middle. Um, you could also just literally have just done, um, so I'm gonna go back, undo my flex, just go back to um, block here. And you know, I could have just done this too. So if I do my container, and I put it right back here, so starting over, and I'll make this container be red or whatever. Um, you could also just have taken this and then just give it enough margin, oops, sorry, enough um, padding on the heading that it would have just pushed this down the page or whatever. So all I did was I put a container in here and I gave it a color and then I clicked on my, my setting here. Oh, I have heading selected and then inside my padding, I just made a huge gap there and that would be another way to center it. The problem though is that if that were to grow or shrink, it would not always necessarily stay exactly centered. But if you just really wanted to do quick and dirty, you could just put a block in there and just push it down until it's in the middle. So again, when I said there's like a half dozen different ways to do something, to accomplish something, that's sort of what I was getting at. But. But um, the idea here is, so we're gonna come back. I'm gonna go here, get my container. I'm gonna throw it in. And then I'm gonna get rid of this padding value, go down to zero. And I have my container, and I will go back to my heading, change this to flex, horizontal is okay, change a line to center, and then I have this right here in the middle. And then now, if I were to put a grid inside of my container, uh, and I realized that's, why are those so narrow? Um, usually, I'll tell you what, let's just do it the way I was doing it before. So we'll just start with our uh, heading, and then we'll drag in a paragraph, just underneath that, uh, and then that expands the full size of our container there, you can see, and then we'll just bring in an image as well, oops. And then bring in an image. So if you can get to this point, you're, you're already there. I just have a container and I just drew, dragged in a heading, a paragraph, and an image. Can you guys get to that point? Let me take a look and see. Questions on this so far? Go ahead, yeah. Like, I tried to like, add like, the box over there, mm -hmm. but like, it wasn't 
Yeah, it's up here. Uh -huh. But like, it, it's not moving. Like. Yeah, that's okay. So you don't select the container. You have to select the parent. So click, click just anywhere outside of it. Yeah. Okay. So in here, do you see that one right there? Uh -huh. Click on that, on the, 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 the middle one. The that one, yeah. Okay. And then now it's in the middle. Okay. So it's like the, the parent container is where you give the instructions for the things that are inside it. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. It, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but that's just how they do it. But yeah, you got it. There you go, yeah, you got your grid. And then just try dragging in a heading into one of the, yeah, you got it, exactly. And then you can drag in a paragraph and drag an image, drag in whatever you want. And then when you have your grid settings too, you can click on this little one in the right corner there. And then, um, and then you see now you can give yourself columns, you can delete that, uh, yeah, Command Z. Yeah, I think if you right click it, um, and then you can say delete columns, yeah, exactly, and do it that way. How's it coming? Oh yeah, beautiful, you got it. So if you were to drag an image uh, into e anywhere on that side, uh, and then go ahead and so, do you have one that you can use, just something on your computer, like a photograph or something? So go ahead and drag an image into that. Oh, it should have worked. Huh? Well, that's funny. So let's try this. I know this is a little silly. Um, we'll just go to the, the add here and we'll say actually add an image and then we'll replace it. I, it that, what you did should have worked. I'm not sure why it didn't, but we'll just pull in uh, image into here and then now um, do choose image and then um, say upload and then wherever, do you know where that was? Yeah, you can just do it that way. That's another way. Yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah, look at that. That's so great. So you could build this in Webflow if you wanted to. Oh, so how to keep the web, Webflow and my app in the same place? Um, what do you mean in the same place? In the same place. Because we need uh, an app and a website. How can we keep the information on it renew at the same time? So what you would do is like, um, oh, I see what you're saying. So, I mean, they're two separate things, you know, because on the one hand, there's your app that people use, um, which I guess for you, is it going to be, is it a web app or is it like a, a like an app that you download to your phone? Do you know what, what you have in mind yet? That you download to your phone? So, I mean, in that respect, um, you'd have to put it in the Android Play Store or you'd have to put it in the iOS Store and then you would download it. And then separately from that, you'd have a website that then would like talk about it and give people instructions on how to use it and how to download it and stuff. So that would be like a separate place. So I don't think there's a way you can keep them together. If I'm understanding your question right, I may not be understanding your question right. Uh, yeah, well, maybe right. Um, you see, you can have, have the Outlook on your phone and also mm -hmm. can have Outlook on computer. Right, 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 right. So I see what you mean. So. I mean, ultimately, you could, um, I mean, if this were just like a web app, you could build this, like you could build this probably in Webflow. Oh. I mean, you could, you could literally, I mean, you have this right here, um, and then you would have like, um, uh, well, tell you what, let me, let me think about the best way to, I, I have an idea what you're talking about, but let me, let me see if there's some other questions here, and I think, I think I know what you're talking about. In fact, I have office hours tomorrow night if you want to come, yeah, so, and then we can chat. What's that? No Skype? Oh, there's no schedule. Oh, uh, is it already full, I guess, for do they have the spots, or? I mean, if you just showed up, it's fine. I'm sure we can, we can work it out. Just come, it's fine, yeah. Okay, let's see, where are you? I'm just, like, playing around. I got so lost at the beginning. So oh, shoot, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're okay. Fine. Okay, do you, I mean, I'm happy to answer any questions. Is there anything, is it making sense, or is it like, frustrating, or? I can't, like, draw, like, like, to change the size of, like, these text boxes and stuff, how do I, like? Yeah, great question. So, so, like, and that's where it's, like, because it is a website, if it were, it'd be great if it were literally just, like, um, like yeah, I mean, box. sort of it is, but, like, anyway, so if you go down, there is a width value, if you get to it, it's right there. 
So you could say, I want this to be like 50% or whatever, and then, uh, stretch. And now okay. it's 50%. And then, yeah. yeah, so then, again, you sort of have to learn a little bit of, um, so you have to, there's a button here that is um, margin, um, and oops. Oh, so you just like keep You have to say that. auto on each of the two sides here, mm -hmm. um, and then that will center it. And so again, I know that's like, yeah. you're, you're, you're going to learn a little bit about website design, because like if you were literally coding that by hand, you would type margin auto and that would, yeah give like both sides are automatic and so that tells it to center it and something and so again there's only like a handful maybe like a half dozen or so tricks like that, that you'll have to learn to do this but once you learn it you'll just do it over and over again and it's fine but yeah and like i said and partly why I, I chose webflow to demo is not only because there is a lot of just like dragging and dropping it's really simple but the videos they have on their website the tutorials literally anything and it's very clear very simple you can pause anything you want to learn how to do they're there and so there's not a lot of um, software where they have such a sophisticated amount of like you know that kind of thing whatever but yeah and again it, it's a little bit more than some other things like Squarespace you could use but again it's like you, you're like locked into their template you can't like draw boxes wherever you want them and move them wherever you want them so it has a little bit more learning curve but the payoff is much higher that's sort of yeah how we got here so yeah let me come over here so I saw I know I went through that kind of fast here how we do oh look at that you got it son of a gun that's beautiful well done yeah so then again if you were to just publish this right now like people would see this lot like this would be your site like you can make links and some people are on stuff like that and, uh, and I realize again this is um, uh, I, I'm not gonna expect you to learn a lot of all this right now I just wanted to show you that um, it's it was just a little bit of uh, playing around on your own and and you'll end up learning um, a little bit about sort of um, about uh, basic CSS uh, and that's essentially what this is here on the right hand side this panel the style panel that's basically just CSS which is the language of the web for for styling things just in a visual thing so normally you'd have to code all this by hand uh, but in Webflow you can just click on boxes and stuff and it, you don't have to remember any of it which is nice but um, so let's take a look here and here's our iPad view here's our landscape view um, eh, it's not too bad. I'd probably, in this view, I'd probably want to move this guy down some. So I'll grab its margin and move him a little. I'd probably move that margin a little bit as well. You know, so you see I'm just like playing around, I'm just grabbing the margin here, just moving them, spacing them out a little bit. Um, but that's all I did on that. And then you come back to here, come back to here, come back to here. Um, so one thing I didn't get into at all is in the interactions. There is, um, this little button over here on the far side. Again, I, I'm trying not to overwhelm you with too much information, but one thing that's really fun about, about um, Webflow is, and I'll just show you if I like had this heading here, uh, and then I came over here to my interactions, which is the last panel all the way to the right. Uh, and this is sort of similar to what we did yesterday with Figma. For the guys, those of you that were there, you can take an element and you can say, okay, on click or on hover or on tap, is your action and then what do you want it to do? And for Figma, it's pretty limited. Just go from this artboard to this artboard. Um, but what's fun with, um, with Webflow is that I could say like, click on this App Store button, let's say. And if you click this button, I want this photo to disappear or spin or something. So I'm gonna say this. And again, you don't have to do this. I'm just gonna show you that I can just say element trigger. So what trigger do I want? Let's do a click. And then on the first click, what do you want it to do? I wanna start an animation. Uh, and I want to create an animation and we'll call it, again, this is sort of um, advanced, but we'll do, um, how about rotate? And um, we will do, let's say, Very good. Um, so when I click it, I want it to spin upside down. And I say, yep, I feel good about that. I want it to take a half a second. Uh, let's do a little slower. Let's do it a second here. And again, don't, don't worry about all this. I just wanted to show you that there's something kind of cool you can play with. And we say, yep, I feel good about that. Close. So it's called new timed animation. And then if I were to go to my view here and I click on this guy and, zoop, and he flips around. 
So again, I, I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole of interactions, but the idea that you can take anything on the page and you can assign an action to it, and then you can say, when I click this, I want this thing to happen. It doesn't have to just be the thing that, that you're looking at. It could be, so I'll do it again here, click on this guy, and he spins. Um, you could also do it where it's like, I want to click on Google Play Store, and I want the um, iPhone to uh, spin or something like that. So I will say here, element trigger, click, mouse click, and on the first click, I want to start an animation, and I say um, new thing, and I click on the phone, and then I say, what do I want the phone to do? I want it to, um, let's say, scale. And we will say scale, I want it to get really small on the first click. And then on the second click, uh, I want it to do that again. I want it to scale. So let's see if this works. I want it to go back to one. Okay, I'm gonna come over here and we say click, click. So I click it once, it goes down, I click it twice, it gets big. So again, I, and this, I'm, not, you know, I'm not wanting you guys to follow along, I'm just showing you that like, again, you can really have a lot of fun with this. So here's my little animation, my little app store. Anyway, okay, so back to this. So the last thing, I won't belabor this too much here. Um, I just wanna show you guys that when I did this down here, um, I haven't, extra thing here I don't need. Let me delete this, delete columns. Yeah. So when I made this one underneath here, uh, I'll just show you guys, it'll be much simpler. You can see there's no funny business with like centering it or whatever. This one uh, is a little bit simpler. So uh, once you've sort of got this over here, uh, you come down a little bit and this one's just pure white. So that one's gonna be a little simpler. So I scroll down and I do not have one in here. So I'm gonna add a section to the underneath here. Uh, I'm going to put it on the bottom. There we go. So I have a little section that I added to the bottom of the page. And I'll make it white like the other one. This one I'm going to make a fixed height here just so we can see it. So height I'll just say is 300 pixels. And you can see so it's 300 pixels wide. So it looks sort of like this guy here. And again, I'm going to put a container in it so that I don't have it full, full size. Because if I didn't put a container in it, if I just threw a grid in there, then you'll see the grid is going to be the full, the full all the way side to side but I don't want it to be all the way side to side like that. I want it to have a, I want it to be bound by a width. So I'm gonna use a container and put that in there and then I'll put the grid inside the container. And that's what I wanted. Uh, for this section, so now we see here and on this guy, how many did I have? I had, uh, it was four by three. So we'll do the same thing on this one. So we'll say four this way by three this way. Okay, groovy. And then um, once, I, let's say done. So I have just a, a, a heading here. So I'm gonna drag, I'll say done. And I will say, give me a heading. I'm gonna drag it in here. And you'll see that by default, the heading only goes on this first little block here. But sort of like how we saw before, once you have this heading selected, the grid child, uh, it says it starts in column one, but I want it to end in column four and then it'll span the whole width there. Do you guys see one to four here? And that way it spans across all four. And then I can say, let's center that guy. And then what did we say? Trusted by the world's biggest brands. And then for these images, I just had, um, Um, that's just an image I threw in there. So I, I will grab an image from here. Image, throw it in there. What image do you want? I say choose. Um, I'll have to upload because I got them in here. So we say IBM, say choose. I'll upload that IBM image. And then at this point I can just copy, paste. Oops. I'm supposed to anyway, let's see. Why are you being so fussy? That's so funny. 
Oh, they're putting them in the same box. I see. Okay, go like that. Yep. And I can change this, of course. I say ch replace image, upload, and let's do this one. Hey, why didn't you replace that? There it goes. And then replace this guy. Same deal. Replace image. Uh, Sephora. And then you can see, so the only difference here now, I, you know, I still have four more icon, or you know, I could put at the bottom there, but I have some space above it and some space below it. So the simplest way to probably do that is I'm gonna grab that container and I'll just give it some margin on the top of whatever, 46, and we'll do 46 on the bottom. And then so the margin is the space outside of the box and then the padding, and you can even see the little image here. So the margin is the space outside of the box and the padding is the space inside of the box. So if I were to um, increase the padding inside, let's see what would happen. Yeah, it just squeezes everything in there. So you can see the green is the padding and the blue is the margin. So outside the box, inside the box, that's the difference between these two. And then, um, yeah, that looks pretty good. Getting closer here, and you can see I just have another section down here, so I could throw another section. Just grab one here, throw it underneath this guy. And this one has like a gray background, I guess. Uh, with this similar kind of background or whatever, so um, I'll just do a color just to make things easier. So this section will come over here and we'll say background color, let's make it like a gray. Gray, 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 okay, that's pretty good. And then what do we have in there? We got, um, so this is another, another grid. I'll just show you what it looks like. So it's just um, uh, two FR111. One, one, one. So that basically is like this. I want, to be, I want this to be twice the size of anything else in here. And then you guys all take up the rest of the space. That's what the FR means. Uh, and they just threw in, uh, I just threw in this like heading, heading. So we can do that as well. So let's get another container. I'll throw that in my section. And I'm going to give some padding on this section here because it's sort of hard to see what's going on. Scroll down a little. There we go. So here's my container. So I'll throw a grid in there. Okay, got my grid. And then I'm going to do, what did we do? I forgot what it was. Uh, four across. So two, three, four. And then this one here, I'm just gonna make be two, which is again, it's just, it's, a, it's like a ratio. So it's basically like, I want this column to just be twice the size of any one here. And I want all the rest to just fill up the space. So again, if I were to add another one, um, these get narrower, but this one is still twice the width of any one of these. And I'll delete columns, but I could also do like, instead of one, I could say like 0.6 or something. So I want this one to be 60% of one and this one to be twice as much as this. And so that way you can sort of just, you know, putz around with it. You can also do s fixed width. So you can do pixels like 20 pixels, 50 pixels. You can do percentages. You can mix and match them. So this one FR, I could say, I want it to be 35% um, of the total. And then, so now this is 35% of the total width. This is still twice the size of this one. And this one is 60% of this one. So you can mix and match the dimensions if you want to. That's just sort of getting, getting fancy, but uh, what do we do here? So we don't have a second row, so I'll get rid of my second row. I'll just uh, right click, delete row. So I just have the one here. Uh, and then we have get the latest glamping news. So I'll just pull in a heading and a paragraph. So I'll grab my heading, pull it into here, and say get the, oops, get the latest glamping news. And of course I could change the size of that over here if I wanted to with um, pixel size. Forget Arial, man, let's do um, Oswald. And then underneath that I'll put a paragraph. So come back to here, paragraph, throw it under there. And you, mister, need to be um, why are you looking like that? 
Oh, that's inside of a single div. Okay, let's do that. So I'm going to put a div inside of here, which is just like a contain, it's like a group, like if you group elements in Figma or Photoshop or something. So I'm going to grab my div block and I'll put it in there. And then I'm going to put the heading in this and the paragraph, and then that will make it play nice. Here, and then my paragraph, there it goes. So basically, these are both inside of this, this uh, one div block here, which you can see in a couple places. You can see it down here. Um, you can also see it on the right over here. I've got my container, my grid, and then div is just think of it as a container, like a group. And all it does is just hold my heading and paragraph. This doesn't have any style on it. It's literally just a group holding those together. You could put style on it if you wanted to. You could make it have like a border or something or a different background color. So we could have it be white or something. But um, yeah, so far so good. So we see here and then there's a text field, text field and a submit button. So where did I put the form? Oh, the whole thing is a form, okay. And then I put the grid inside of that. Uh, and, and I'm not gonna get too much into how you actually do a form. Oops, that's our. But um, you have the form fields here, so you could grab the form. There's a form field, form block. And we put it in here. And um, so this form block, uh, what's pretty neat about this is, this actually will just work out of the box in Webflow. Um, you could put name and email address and submit, and then when you log into your Webflow dashboard, you'll see all the entries. You can also have it send you an email as well. So I just threw a form block in here, and it's got the submit button, and um, the only thing I did differently was I just copied uh, these text fields and I pasted them in the other, the other um, grid blocks there. But you can sort of see we're just working our way down the page. And then down here, of course, this should not be hard to figure out. You've got uh, a grid of three columns, and then um, within those three columns that are equal sized, um, you've got just text over here and then some buttons and stuff like that and get the app. And this is just a section with like a dark gray. Uh, and that's sort of the whole thing down the page. We got a little extra fancy with centering this guy in the middle here because the flex box centering is, is probably the trickiest thing that we did all day today so far, but that's sort of the basics. Um, and so I wanna just look around and see if you guys have some more questions, if you're kind of playing with it.